despite what misfortunes you may be experiencing, that the Lord has promised not to forsake us and to always be with us, to help us get through problems that we're experiencing at the moment. When you're doing medical, dental, missionary work, um, there's obviously a tangible benefit for the recipient, for the patient, but there's also a benefit to the provider. Um, and I don't mean just giving you a warm feeling in your heart uh, for a, a job well done and feeling like you're doing some good. Um, we're commissioned as Christians to be the hands and feet of Christ here on earth, you know, to the conduit through which Christ works when he is uh, helping some of his other children. Back in 2010, um, a group of my friends from the hospital invited me to join them on a mission trip to Ethiopia. When we first arrived at the airport in Addis Ababa, I was a little bit worried because I had assembled quite a bit of equipment and supplies. Um, the rumors that I'd heard, or the stories I'd heard, I should say, were that it's difficult to get your equipment and supplies through customs there at the airport. Quite often they will confiscate whatever you're bringing in, accuse you of wanting to sell it as contraband, and then you have to bribe them to get your things back. And so having just bought an expensive x-ray machine, a portable x-ray machine, uh, I was afraid I was going to lose it all. Uh, but uh, as it worked out, they it's almost like the Red Sea parting. They just opened up and let me just pass through. I had these, this big cart full of, piled high with suitcases and things and just rolled right through and they didn't take any of my things. And we saw just over 1,100 patients in seven days while we were there. At the end of the week, we had two days set aside for some sightseeing and for um, enjoying the country and uh, for recreation, if you will. When we got to the National Park, the plan was to spend the night there in some little cottages. And there's some beautiful waterfalls there in the National Park. And the ground, the terrain around the waterfalls are very rocky and very rough terrain. And so I'm taking photographs, you know, of the waterfall and uh, because that's one of my hobbies. And uh, the group said, wanted to go back to the cottages and get settled in. And I said, wait, just, I just want to get a few more pictures. You know, I'll, I'll come behind you, go ahead. And so I took a few more pictures and I trailing along behind them, I stumbled on one of those rocks that are in the area and foolishly I held onto my camera and so instead of putting my hands out to break my fall I landed on my elbow and the forces drove up crushing the ball of the humerus in the socket up here it just crushed it flat and I was stunned initially and I just picked myself back up and at that point my arm wouldn't move it was just hanging as a limp limb on the side of my body, just like dead meat, if you will. It, it, there's no movement in it at all. Not much pain, uh, but I knew something was seriously wrong. And so I staggered back to the camp. And so they decided that they needed to take me immediately back to Eddie Ababa to the hospital. Before we left, um, somebody brought from the National Park. Somebody brought me a plastic bag with a piece of ice in it. It wasn't a terribly big piece of ice, but it was appreciated because I could hold it against my shoulder and it numbed it so that I didn't feel any pain. It took three and a half hours to get back to the hospital. And surprisingly, as we pulled into the parking lot of the hospital, only then was the ice melted and gone. I fully expected it to melt within 30 minutes to an hour at the most, just for my body temperature being against it. 
but the ice stayed, stayed solid for the full three and a half hours until I got back to the hospital. Um, it was unbelievable. I went into the emergency room and as Providence would have it, uh, the doctor they had when I arrived was from America. And I asked him what his specialty was, because he could be any specialty. He could have been a gastroenterologist, he could have been anything. But uh, as Providence would have it, he was an orthopedic surgeon. When those sorts of things happen, uh, there's just no way to explain that away other than it being the work of God. Despite all the difficulties that I encountered there, the Lord was always with me through this whole process. He made things less bad than they could have been. Uh, he put the right people in the right place to give me the help that I needed at the time that I needed it. Um, he kept me from great financial loss and losing expensive equipment. He, um, he provided every need that I had through this whole process.